The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. It's coming. All these voices. They're not yours. You had no right to them when you were alive, and you have no right to them when you're dead. That's what it sounded like. Good, you know who I am. And then you know I'm not playing. You're going to let those women go. In Jesus' name, you're going to let those women go. Is there a here watching us right now? Watching us right now. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring Into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr. And with me as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's having a good evening. What's up, guys? Tonight's episode is going to be fun. This is another one uh, from old boy. And he came across something called the Back Rooms. And he introduced me to it and wanted my opinion on it and everything. And we decided we were going to go ahead and make a show out of it. So, seeing as this is another one from the mind of Old Boy, I say we go to Old Boy first again, because I like the way that worked out last week. That was kind of fun. So, without further ado, we're going to throw over to Old Boy and get his opinion on back rooms, the phenomenon, and whether he believes it's true or not. And then after he's done, I will come back with some general background information about the back rooms and my opinion, and we'll just go from there. So, Old Boy, go ahead, brother. Thank you, brother. Um, this one's a good one. The back rooms. This was my idea. I've been seeing this for the last couple of years, and I finally brought it up to him a couple of weeks ago. And I think this was going to be a good show because we do urban legends like Slender Man. Um, what was it? Siren Head. There's a bunch of other ones. Um, and Jack the Killer. Uh, creepy pasta stuff, and I know some guy named Kane something I forget his name did some movie about the back rooms. Um, so this has been an interesting one. I've seen this a couple times for the last couple years, and it's another like because like I said, Slender Man and all that's creepy pasta stuff, and and that's where the back rooms have really got very popular. And I know there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. Go look up, go and look it up, and you'll see it's all over the w Wikipedia everything and. Uh, Every, a lot of YouTube videos. I see a lot of stuff on TikTok about it. So this is something we have never done. So I threw it to James and he said it was a good idea. So I think it, would have, it was going to be a great show. That's why I decided to pull the trigger on it. And we were going to do it last week, but we got the, the animals uh, have a soul question by a couple people. So we decided to do that show last week. So I'm glad you guys hope you enjoyed that one. This one, my opinion is... And I've been doing a lot of research on this for years. Um, it's about other dimensions. Kind of think uh, Stranger Things a little bit about this. Because um, I know the back rooms are supposed to be these yellow, like, uh, fluorescent light yellow or black rooms, kind of like that. And the other ones where it's just yellow and the, the carpet's real wet or it's soaked with water. There's some back rooms full of water. like a, It's like knee high. And you just keep going on and on. And the rooms are yellow like a smoke color. Like people have been smoking there. And it's just like this nasty ass yellow. Kind of like uh, everything's kind of like dim. And you just keep going rooms and stairs. And then top it off, there's supposed to be these weird creatures that come after you. So, you know, and like I said, I don't know if this... And they're saying it's an urban legend. But there's some people are saying it's, they're, they're, it's a maze. It just keeps going on to another alternate alternate universe or multiverse and i it, do i believe it i don't know we'll get into that in a couple minutes um you know what it sounds like it could be fake because i know about the creepy pasta stuff but i don't know there's some people who are saying they've seen it and done it i believe in other dimensions now it could be a possibility man like there's people who believe that there's another dimension more than one but it's alternate, like everything's dark and there's weird creatures are like, kind of like transparent. You can't see them, but they're like, you know, like you see it, but it comes after you and they're big and they're ugly looking and they look contorted. 
kind of like skinwalkers. And what I was thinking is, and this is a theory I have, what if this is one of their dimensions, like the skinwalker dimension? And this is their, this is their realm, not like Earth. And that's what just what they look like. It's a different version of Earth, different, different realm. And, and, and this is what I was going to get on theories. Cause I know, you know, I know you guys are probably, what the hell, um, the back rooms, look it up. It's really crazy. Um, they say these things come at chasing after you. And there's actually saying there was a experiment, experiment done by scientists that, that went and went to the, the back rooms and all these, uh, the, this supposedly dimension. And some of them were attacked by creatures and even killed. And it went to these different realms and it's slim, similar to Earth and what I was reading about. And it could be, like I said, it could be just urban legend stuff because this is supposedly an urban legend slash creepypasta. But like Slender Man, there's some truth to it. What I've been looking at, and if you guys watch, you know, Stranger Things, I've been watching it here and there. Um, you know, it's supposed to be about the, some of it's about the Mar the Marduk. In New Jersey, some of the experiments they were doing, and I don't really want to talk about it, but um, that's kind of where I think they're going, and that's kind of where the back rooms are coming from a little bit, but they're saying it's this dimension with all these walls. They're yellow, and the floor is soaking wet, or it's it's full. It's like knee-high water. Um, it smells. It's fluorescent, yellow, sometimes dark fluorescent. But it just keeps going on, and then all of a sudden, these these creatures will chase you. And I I've been reading a lot about it, um, and doing some research on it. You know, I don't know. I don't think it's impossible. You know, because of the whole dimensional thing, and I have my opinions. I think we are in different dimensions. Not. I think that when you pass away, I think you just go to another dimension. Like that's what your dreams are. It shows you what else is going on in other worlds. And I think sometimes you get stuck in those worlds and you just never come back from this one. You're just in a different time and a different place and you're just a different kind of person. But I believe that it's just a different scenario. Like things are different. Like here, you're married to somebody, your wife, but your wife's your best friend. And then you're married to somebody else that you hate here or, or just a friend with. It's just, it's different. It's a different scenario. And I think that's why we have people who they fall in love with somebody because they used to be with that person in a different time, in a different place, a different century, or maybe a different dimension. You never know, guys. Um, like I said, always give us your per, uh, opinions in the comment sections. We always would like to know what you guys think about the show. This is a very interesting, unique one. So I was just wondering what you guys think. We always want to hear from our fans. We love hearing it um, from you guys. We love you guys. That's why we do all these cool shows. And this one is a really cool, different show. We don't usually do stuff like this. Uh, we'll start doing more of um, I know it's a fad with creepypasta and YouTube and, and TikTok, and I know some of it's, you know, like always, fake or exaggerated. Um, but it's a cool, it's cool story. Check it out, guys. Like, it's pretty creepy. And what do you think? You think that there's another dimension and it's just like gray, yellow walls and wet carpet and it smells like mold? And you're running through it like endless maze and you have these weird distorted creatures chasing you and shadow people chasing after you. And because you're in their realm and they can hurt you. Or is it just a place that you die and you go and it's the afterlife and that's just what it is. It's like an ongoing labyrinth. Like the movie The Labyrinth with David Bowie. And it just keeps going on and on and on. And it's just these back rooms. <laughs> <laughs> but there's people who have just been there alive, so I don't believe that. Probably not true, but something similar to that, I wouldn't doubt. Um, I, I'm i going to say there's a possibility. Um, a lot of people are saying the same thing about the rooms and stuff like that. So, you know, you never know. It could be people just saying something, but you never know. It's something I would want to do more research on. Um, I know James is probably going to do a bunch on this, so to see if it's real or what's his opinion on, and I know what his opinion's probably going to be. It's just possibility, like everything. Um, I'm f more 50-50 on it. It could be fake, it could be not. 
it's very interesting guys so what do you guys think leave your your comments in you know in the boxes let us know i want to hear it um what you think it is what do you think is is this real do you believe it um i'm 50 50 on it i won't be surprised um i wouldn't mind doing it oh, you got you sound crazy why would you want because I, I don't care i would just want to see if it's real i get the thrill of seeing if things are real i love it um that's why i do what i do most normal people don't go in graveyards and haunted places where demons are supposed to be and people getting sacrificed it takes a certain kind of person to do that and me and james are different people a lot of people who are in the ghost we're pretty extreme we do a lot of stuff that, that a lot of people in the paranormal world won't even touch or or believe some of them don't believe in a lot of stuff and we do because we've seen a lot of crazy things guys we've dealt with a lot we're just not making it up so you guys will watch our show we actually research a lot of this now some people are always going to say oh it's fake you guys are just going by creep dude we listen to every story and reread everything to try to see if it's real or debunk it. This show isn't just all everything's real. No, we debunk things too. That's why we're doing this to see if it's real or, or fake. The back rooms was something I wanted to do for a while. I want to do Siren Head. That's another version of the creepypasta, the giant siren body figure. It's like 60, 70 feet high and he blows like a siren when he comes and he comes and kills people. I, I have my opinions on it. I think that's more, I'm more like 80% it's not real. That, it, But I might want to do a show about it because I like doing stuff about creepypasta because it is urban legends. We love urban legends and there's some truth to some of this stuff, just like the back rooms. There's supposed to be a lot of stuff on YouTube about this. A lot of people have been attacked. Some people been, they said they've been to the back rooms. There's mazes. There's some people who have died. There's creatures have took them um and killed them or something or they turn into these creatures i don't know what i've read all kinds of different things about this i don't know what my opinion is i don't think that some of it's true but i think some of it might be it may be a real place it may be uh still iffy on it but i'm not saying it's wrong or right i don't know really i have to really keep on reading more about it but it's really cool um I inter it's very interesting. I told James about it. He was very interested about it. So, like, if James gets interested on something, then he's going to do it. And we are doing it right now, guys. So, now, things following you and chasing you sounds like a dream. So, is this, like, a dream world? Is this another dimension? Do these creatures, are they in our dimension? That's why they show up sometimes. That's why we have all these you know, negative, cre like the shadow people are supposed to be negative. Is that who this, this is their realm? Is this where the spirit realm is? Or is this just a different place that we just didn't know about? Now we're hearing about it because people are coming out. Or some people said it's a part of time. It's a, it, what time, what the, the, the future is going to be. Um, we're going to be running away from these. Because there was some guy that said he was from the future and he saw this dimension. It was all dark, kind of like, stranger things where they have another dimension it's all dark and i'm like eh, he probably got that from that um and he shows like he's getting chased by a weird creature screaming but it's like it's like different it's transparent it's it, you can't really see it it's like blurred it's it's kind of like i don't know if you guys seen that movie what was it um it wasn't vhs god i forget what it was it was abc's i think it is is murder was it abc's or was it the it was an it was one of these horror movies where it was a creature was doing that it was transparent it would kill you like that it would like you see like a tv like it come out like it's all distorted like tv like mad max kind of like you remember that show max matt the max guy he go da -da 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 -da, and he do all kinds of, and they had it in back to the future kind of like that but it was distorted it you wouldn't see the face it was like a distorted creature and it killed these people and that's what they're saying this kind of is like they're they're like dark kind of like shadowy distorted people and they make weird crazy sounds and i don't know man i wouldn't want to be there like endless yellow walls smell like mold water everywhere up and down stairs these things coming at you and they come in there fast you you don't know where they're coming and they screaming at you like distorted radio screaming that's what i've what i've seen with these things coming at people so i don't know man what do you guys think uh i don't know if i want to be in that dimension <laughs> um 
Well, I would try. I mean, I'm, I'm up for anything, guys. You know that. I'm crazy. So, you know, yeah, you have to be if you're old boy. And I know you guys are seeing me, you know, and, and I saw this, the, the mentioned something out of this. There was somebody that saw me and says, old boy's got to change. No, I've been growing my beard for almost seven months now, guys. And yeah, I'm, I've changed a little bit. You know, I got the beard going and you know, I look a lot different than I, yeah, I do with without a beard. But, eh, I, I, I'm glad you, some of you guys like it. A lot of people do. Uh, I'm going to keep it for a while. So, yeah, this is the uh, the new look for old boy. And I hope you guys like it. I do. I like the beard. It's starting to come out. You guys can see me now so you can see what I look like. And it's because we've been doing that differently. And I'm glad we're doing it. So now you can see the face to me and James. And we were just on a show on Sunday. Um, guy, uh, They have a group in Connecticut and, and they in Europe. And they've been working on the para, um, I forgot what it was called, normal, normal, paranormal. And they were really cool. Uh, the one guy was kind of sick, so he had to leave at the beginning of the show. But me and James talked to the guy from England, and he was really cool. Cool. Uh, hopefully that you guys saw that. If not, I think there's going to be a replay. Um, and I hope you guys, and if you did watch it, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, but on to this subject. Yes, um, it's a possibility, but I'm kind of iffy still. I think it might be just an urban legend. But you never know, guys. I could be wrong. You know, I'm not a, I'm not an expert. I know a lot of things, but I'm no expert. Uh, experience is one thing, but expert, I, I, I don't think anybody's really an expert in anything. They know a lot and experience, super experience, but expert is almost perfect. And no one's really perfect. So, no one. Um, so... That's my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed what I said. Leave the comments again, like I said, and let me know what you guys think. But other than that, there you go, James. That's my opinion. Thank you, brother. All right. Thank you, brother. Um, so what I'm going to do is I did a lot of research on this uh, this week, trying to figure out whether or not Backrooms was even a thing, if it was real, uh, exactly what it was. And I started out in the most obvious place to start out, which was the Wikipedia page on Backrooms. From there, I went to all kinds of different fan site wikis and even different articles like by uh, reputable news sources that have done articles on the Backrooms. What I found with all the reputable news sources is that really the information is exactly the same as the Wikipedia page has. There's really not a whole lot of info here. Um, but we can actually get a definitive answer to whether or not this is real or not fairly quickly in, in today's show. It was literally the first day of my research that I came to the conclusion what I thought about this right away, within like maybe an hour. But I'm going to present you with all this information anyway. It's not a ton. It's like, I don't know, seven, eight minutes worth. And then we're going to kind of go through some some hypotheticals after I want to give my opinion on, on what I think about the phenomenon of back rooms, if it's real or not. And after that, we're going to go through some hypotheticals on ways that you could have something like the back rooms actually exist. So without further ado, we're going to go to the information and then I'll be back on the other side of it to try to make sense of this. This information about the back rooms comes primarily directly from the Wikipedia page. There are multiple articles uh, from different news sources about the back rooms, but they essentially use this information that I'm about to give you as their basis for the article. So you're not going to learn anything new in those articles that you wouldn't learn right here. There's also several different fan site website things about the back rooms uh, they go through hundreds of levels the different entities that are in it all that kind of stuff um, but all of that honestly is it kind of reads like fan fiction and there's really no rhyme or reason to it um, so I'm just going to give you the background information about the back rooms off of the Wikipedia page so the back rooms is an urban legend and creepy pasta describing an endless maze of randomly generated office rooms and other environments. It is characterized by the smell of moist carpet, walls with a monochromatic tone of yellow, and buzzing fluorescent lights. 
Internet users have expanded upon this concept by creating different levels of the back rooms and entities which inhabit them. And this I'm going to show you right now on the screen is the original 4chan post. This is where the back rooms originated. This came on a board called X, which is like a paranormal board on 4chan. And this is the actual post. The, the post was asking for unsettling pictures. And somebody put this picture up. And this is what was written with it. If you're not careful and you no clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum humbuzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby, because it sure as hell has heard you. And that was the original 4chan post that started the whole idea of back rooms. The original version came from a two-paragraph 4chan comment on a post asking for unsettling images, where an anonymous user invented a story based on one of the photos. The back rooms drew comparisons to various other horror trends and media, including the photography of liminal spaces. The SCP Foundation Collaborative Fiction Project and the six hour long album series Everywhere at the End of Time. Since its original creation, the back rooms has been expanded into various other forms of media and internet culture, including video games, collaborative fiction wikis, and YouTube videos. The back rooms originated from a thread posted on the X board of 4chan on May 12, 2019 where an anonymous user asked for others to post disquieting images that just feel off. There, the first photo depicting the back rooms was uploaded, presenting a slightly tilted image of a yellow-colored hallway. Another anonymous user commented on the photo with the first story about the back rooms, claiming that one enters the back rooms when they no-clip out of reality in the wrong areas, which is a video game-related term originating from Doom for when a player passes through a physical boundary that would otherwise block their way. And that's not just from Doom. It may have originated from Doom, I don't know. But that happens in a lot of different video games. Just as somebody who plays a lot of video games and, and has been a gamer since the first Atari. I mean, really since before that, since Pong. When it was literally just Pong was the game and you hooked it up to your TV. I've been a gamer my whole life. And... Pretty much every step of the way you've had these kind of glitches where you can kind of glitch out of the, the video game world you're supposed to be in and enter into another one. You know, that started way back in the Atari days. After the 4chan post gained fame, several internet users wrote horror stories relating to the back rooms. Many memes were created and shared across social media, further popularizing the creepypasta. Some have stated they had seen the image somewhere before. In the opinion of Manning Paston from Happy Mag, these comments were existential, hollow, and terrified. Paston commented on the use of the term no clip, interpreting it as glitches in which walls of reality are torn down, such as the existence of doppelgangers. Comparing the location to the level design of the Resident Evil franchise, Kathleen Kubrick of SoMag News called the back rooms the terrifying creepypasta of cursed dreams. The location of the original back rooms photo is unknown, although a number of locations have been proposed. It is possible that the image is a procedurally generated digital composition. The creepypasta has also been associated with the concept of canopsia, first coined in the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. The eerie, forlorn atmosphere of a place that's usually bustling with people, but is now abandoned and quiet. The back room's original concept has been expanded by internet users, who have created different levels of the location. There are thousands of levels found within fan-made wikis of the back rooms, featuring different photos and safety classes in a format influenced by the SCP wiki. One canon is that there are three distinct levels. The levels specified in this canon include 
Level Zero, the lobby. This is the level depicted in the original backrooms photo, featuring all of the creepypasta's most well-known characteristics. Moldy carpet, yellow walls, and buzzing fluorescent lights. One of the entities created by users for this level are hounds, described as disfigured and manic humanoid beings. Another feature of this level is a no-clip zone, which can bring wanderers back to Earth's dimension, return them to the starting point of level zero, or to another level with different hostile organisms. So essentially a warp. Level one, habitable zone. A level reached when one chooses not to enter a no-clip zone, and instead wanders around level zero for days. It is darker than level zero and features a more industrial architecture, with mechanical-like sounds being heard through the place. The level appears to be a dark, dingy warehouse with low-lying fog and puddles of water, which randomly appear. In contrast to level zero, the fluorescent lights begin to flicker more frequently, occasionally shutting down completely. This is when the beings come out. Level two. Pipe Dreams. The third level of the back rooms, according to the three-level interpretation, is one of the darkest levels, containing more industrial-like architecture. This level appears as long service tunnels with pipes lining the walls. It is described as being reached when one simply wanders around level one for a long enough period of time, and featuring a much higher temperature than other levels. Survivors of the back rooms claim that the only way to escape the level is to remain calm, stating that only when the back rooms have become your home can you depart. And that is what the Wikipedia page says about back rooms. Okay, so as you can probably tell, it's fairly conclusive and fairly easy to come up with our conclusion. My opinion and my conclusion on back rooms and whether they're real is 100% absolutely BS. They're made up. Um, not only do I believe they're made up, but guys, I showed you the original post from 4chan. We have the origin point of this urban legend. We know exactly where it started. We even have them saying that they made up a story to go along with this picture in order to make it fit the post. Now, this took place on 4chan. For those that are not familiar with 4chan, 4chan is a message board site, and it has all kinds of different boards on it. So the board we're talking about here is called X. It is a paranormal and strange occurrences type board where basically it's everything paranormal, ghosts, monsters, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they also have a board called B that is kind of just random, whatever. And they have all kinds of different boards ranging from video games and comics all the way to adult-themed stuff. Basically, the idea behind 4chan, the same as 8chan, 8coon, a lot of those kind of boards, is that you have anonymous users. So these are people that they call anons, which go onto the boards and they don't give their name. They just are able to comment after making an account. Now, you'll know that a particular person has commented uh, and that it's the same person commenting because they have what's called a trip code. And the trip code is a series of numbers after their name that is like a, a secure code that only they can use. And that way you know that it's this person that, that posted. Uh, none of that is really relevant to what we're talking about, but I just want you to have a, a basic understanding of how 4chan, 8chan, uh, 8chan's no longer around. They, they took 8chan down, but uh, they changed it to 8 Coon. Uh, but how those boards basically work. So that's what we're talking about here. you got anonymous people. you got a post that said, hey, put up unsettling images. Spooky-looking pictures, basically. And somebody put this picture up, and somebody else came along after, saw the picture, and made up a little story to go along with it. Now, if you've ever been in any of these kind of horror groups or or paranormal type groups on Facebook or any place like that, you'll know that that's something that happens every once in a while where somebody will start a scary story and then the next commenter will come along and add a line to it. And then the next commenter will come and add a line to it. 
that's kind of what's going on here. You had somebody put a scary picture up, and then you had somebody else come along and, and add a little story to it to kind of make it spooky. From there, it kind of got popular, and people started making memes and stuff of it, and it kind of went viral. And what the phenomenon you have happening right now is what happens with a lot of this stuff, where somebody just makes something up, and it catches on. And unfortunately, the paranormal is full of not only researchers and people that, that study this stuff, but also a lot of people that are just kind of looky-loos, that, that are just interested and they want to know about the paranormal. So they kind of pop in every once in a while and check things out and see what's going on. Um, those people are usually pretty gullible because they want to believe, right? They're not coming into this with a scientific frame of mind where they're trying to prove or disprove something or debunk something or, or prove that it exists. What they're doing is they want to believe. They want to be scared. They want to see something spooky. Uh, these kind of people are the ones that take something like this and run with it. They start making up their own experiences. And so then you start getting a lot of these witness accounts that are absolute nonsense. You know, people saying, oh yeah, I went to the back rooms and this happened and this happened and this happened. And it's, it's BS. All of it is BS. Those people are lying. Um, I don't think there's any malicious intent in their lie, but they're, they're lying. They're trying to, to kind of latch on to a phenomenon that's happening that is popular and that people are, are having fun with. And it's turned into a role-playing game of sorts, almost like D&D back in the day. Uh, but this is kind of a LARP. It's a live-action role-play to where people are pretending that they're doing these things and they're not actually doing them. And then if you go onto the fan wikis, which are the, like the little uh, Wikipedia-style sites that fans put up, you see all kinds of craziness. I mean, now there's, it went from the original three levels in the beginning to now there's thousands upon thousands of levels. And there's even di different sections on these things where you can look up different entities that appear on each level. And there's just all kinds of crazy entities that do not exist in any mythology or lore anywhere. Now they mix in a few that do, but there's a lot of them that are just brand new that they've just made up out of whole cloth. And inserted insert into this. So now you've got a fan fiction going on. You've got a, a LARP going on, a live action role play. And you've also got kind of this, this weird mythology that is growing up around this. And that has led to it becoming very popular. And that has led to movies. It's led to video games. And now it's a, it's a very popular phenomenon that people are wondering if it's real or not. Well, the answer to that is no, it ain't real. It came from 4chan, May 12th, 2019. Uh, we know the board it came from. We have the picture of the original post. So we know exactly the origin of this. We know it's BS. Now, that being said, now that we have debunked it and we know it's garbage, what an interesting concept. The concept itself of... Slipping into another dimension. Because that's essentially what they're talking about here. They're talking about going through a wormhole of sorts and, and sliding into another dimension and wandering around in there. Could that actually happen? What kind of precedent do we have of that kind of phenomenon taking place? And... If it is possible, what are the conditions that would need to be met for it to actually take place? Well, this is a, a complex question to answer, and there's a lot of different moving parts. Um, the first thing I'll talk about is astral projection. We actually did a show not too long ago about this very subject. And the idea that when people are astral projecting at night when they're sleeping, they are actually entering into other dimensions. And the things that they are seeing are taking place in other dimensions, or they are taking in place in other universes in the multiverse. Uh, that was a kind of a cool little theory we came up with, and we were talking about it. So through astral projection, there's an argument to be made that you very well could enter another dimension and interact in that dimension. So that's one way that it could be possible that this could be a real phenomenon 
that would take place. Not, not that back rooms are real. I want to specify that. They're BS. But I don't want anybody to think that, that I'm saying that astral projection will get you into a back room. That's not what I'm saying. I do not believe that there is a dimension you can slip into that is an empty office building that you walk around all these different levels. That's nonsense. But the idea that possibly you could astral project into another dimension and wander that existence is interesting. And there's an argument to be made for it. It, it is possible. Is it true? Maybe, maybe not. Could it actually happen? Maybe, maybe not. But there is an argument to be made. There is theories out there that state that that's exactly what's going on during astral projection. The second thing I'll talk about is high energy points. Uh, there's a lot of spots on the globe where you have increased paranormal activity. One of the theories about this is that it is because it is a high energy point, a point to where the the wall or the the boundary between dimensions or between universes or whatever it is, is thinner than in other spots of the world. And because of that, you have bleed over that happens. So a lot of the paranormal activity that's taking place are actually interdimensional beings, which are somehow crossing over from their dimension to ours and interacting with this world. Um, that's one of the theories of what these high energy points are. If that is the case, then that is another way that you could very well enter into another dimension is if you found one of these high energy points and at this high energy point, there was some sort of wormhole that would enable you to, to leave our dimension, our plane of existence and cross over into the other dimensions. There you have it. That's a way that it could actually happen. So are there wormholes at these high energy points? I don't know. Uh, quite frankly, I doubt it because there's really no proof of it. You have areas on the planet that have a lot more paranormal activity than other places. And a lot of those places also, the magnetic frequency is different. So there's an argument to be made that there is some sort of weird energy source there that's happening. Something is going on where we're getting different readings there than anywhere else. And in those spots, you do have higher levels of paranormal activity. The question is, is that paranormal activity real? Or is it an energy-induced hallucination? Let's put it that way. Because we know that as investigators, we look for EMF, which is your electromagnetic frequency. You have EMF detectors that can pick up high levels of EMF uh, you'll get those a lot of times around telephone poles and stuff like that. When there are high levels of EMF, you will see a lot more paranormal activity. Uh, when there are scientifically proven reasons for the high levels of EMF, you still see the paranormal activity. So that makes me wonder, is the paranormal activity that's taking place there real? Or is it simply some sort of hallucination caused by the high EMF? Is it causing your brain to hallucinate those levels of, of EMF? Is that what's going on there? I don't know for sure. Uh, it's a theory. Um, but that is another situation to where you have documented levels of EMF that are higher than normal. And you have documented paranormal activity taking place. So that would be in line with these high energy points around the globe where you have high levels of energy and you have more paranormal activity taking place. Real or energy-induced hallucination? That's the question. And I don't think right now we can answer that, honestly, because we don't have enough data to make a determination. Um, when this hits YouTube, let me know down in the comments section what you guys think about that. Do you think that there's a direct correlation between high levels of EMF and high levels of energy in, in general and paranormal activity taking place? And do you believe that it's the energy causing your brain to hallucinate? Or do you believe that the paranormal activity is real 
and that these paranormal entities are drawn to the high levels of energy because those high levels of energy feed them in a way. They give them the power to manifest and to interact with our world. Could that be why these areas have more paranormal activity? Could it be that it's not a thin spot at all between dimensions or worlds? It's simply an area where there's a lot more energy and paranormal entities kind of can hone in on that and they sense it and they can go there and utilize it to manifest. And that's why there's more paranormal activity. That makes a lot of sense to me. But let me know down in the comment section when this hits YouTube what you guys think about that. So you have that. So you have the high energy hotspots. You have astral projection. And you also have the entire multiverse theory. Now, I've been over the multiverse theory multiple times. I'll do it real shortly this time. I won't go into great detail. Essentially, the multiverse theory states that there are an infinite number of universes, like pages of a book, and they lay on top of each other, and they do not bleed over into each other usually. Um, any decision you make, there's multiple choices to what you could have done. Each one of those choices creates another universe. That's why it's an infinite amount. So basically, if you go and do an election, right, and you vote for candidate A, but you also could have voted for candidate B, there is a universe in which you voted for candidate A, which is this one, the one you're in, and then there's a universe where you voted for candidate B. So somewhere out there in the multiverse, you voted the opposite way that you voted. That's the basic theory. Every choice you make, new universe, infinite number of universes. So, with that being said, here's where it gets weird. Even though we know that this is absolute BS, okay? We know where this started. We know it's not real. Even though we know that, according to the multiverse theory, somewhere out there in the multiverse, there's probably a universe in which backrooms actually exist. In which this is a real thing. And it's not made make-believe. It's not nonsense. It's not BS. It actually exists. And you can do it. There's probably a multiverse out there, a universe that magic is not only absolutely real and common knowledge, but is practiced all the time. Where you have people walking around like a Doctor Strange movie and using magic all the time. There's probably a universe like that out there. If the multiverse theory is true, which is a very interesting concept. Now, I'm not going to get into theoretical astrophysics and try to determine whether or not the multiverse theory is true or not. I happen to believe it probably is. It would answer a lot of questions and it would make a lot of sense. Um, but I can tell you this is not real. Now, this is one of those shows that people kind of gloss over because one criticism that we get sometimes is that we believe a lot of stuff and you'll have people say, Oh man, those guys from staring, man, they, they believe everything. They believe this is real. They believe that is real. It's nonsense. They're just lying to you, trying to, trying to get you to clickbait. Well, here's a show where I am absolutely telling you this is not real. I'm debunking this. I showed you the screenshot of the actual post on 4chan, where this was invented. So you know it's not real. But I bet you that I'm still going to get that criticism down the road. Somebody's going to say that because they didn't see this show or any of the other shows that I did where I debunked something. Yes, we believe things are real because we've seen a lot of things. But that doesn't mean that every single thing is real. And that is a very important distinction to make. But you got to understand that and, and before I say this, let me preface it with this. If the last couple years have shown you anything, it's that a lot of things that you believe to be true were not true. You have been lied to a great deal about a lot of things in your life. You've been lied to 
by your government. You've been lied to by your teachers. You've been lied to by scientists. You've been lied to by everybody that you're supposed to trust. All the authorities on everything have lied to you about most of it. And that is becoming very apparent as we go along. I could go into multiple details, but I don't really feel like getting my channel banned again. But you all know what those examples are. And I'm telling you, you've been lied to a lot about the paranormal as well. There is a reason why a lot of these creatures and monsters and entities and things are present in just about every single folklore, legend, mythology, lore of every single civilization. There's a reason for that. You can't tell me dragons aren't real. Because dragons are everywhere from England to ancient China. Every single civilization had legends of dragons. Even the Bible talks about dragons. Okay? You can't tell me that ghosts are not real. When every single civilization has had mythology and lore about ghosts. There's a reason why all of these different people in all of these different times have talked about the exact same things. They didn't all get together. They didn't like jump in a time machine somewhere and all meet up and get together and say, all right, listen, guys, this is a story we're going to tell the world. They wrote about what they saw and what they knew. The same reason that in ancient caves you can find cave drawings of cave people hunting woolly mammoths because they drew what they knew. They did those things. That's why they drew them. That was their life. They documented it. That is what mythology and legend is. It's people documenting their existence. Now, they do it in, in a way of storytelling. So some of the stuff is fictional. The story is fictional. But it's based on actual reality, on things that they've lived with and that they've experienced in their life. And just like writers today, we write novels based on our own experiences, based on the world that we know. Unless you're a fantasy writer, like, you know, Margaret Weiss, Tracy Hickman, the Dragonlance people, Forgotten Realms, those guys, Tolkien, those kind of people... Unless you're like that, you don't invent an entire new world, an entire new uh, creatures and everything to populate that world. You write about the world you know. That's what all of this was. That's what all the mythologies and the lores and the legends throughout history are people writing about the world that they knew. So you can't tell me that these things don't exist. So my final sum up, this is not real, it's BS, but... There are ways that it could be possible to actually go to another dimension. And I've talked about some of those tonight. So let me know down in the comment section when this hits YouTube what you guys think. Do you believe that backrooms are real? Do you believe that they're not? Do you also believe that it would be possible to travel to another dimension using one of the ways that I've talked about? So I'm going to throw it back over to Old Boy and get his final sum ups and shout outs and all that. And then I will be back to wrap this thing up. So, old boy, go ahead, brother. And thank you again, brother. Um, I want to thank everybody on Parax Radio who listens to us every Sunday night at 9 Pacific, 12 Eastern. And Tuesday on the Best Of Show, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. Uh, you guys want to listen to all our new and old shows, check us out on James Hershey's YouTube page and subscribe. If you guys want some merchandise, he'll tell you where to go. Shirts, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, iPhone cases. You guys like the show, please let us know what you think in the comments. Leave it and be nice, guys. I hope you guys are having a good uh, summer. It's almost over. Um, it's almost done. It's almost September, guys. So keep cool as much as you can. So I hope everybody has a good night. Misfits, Sugar Ladies, Monster Lovers, and Demon Hunters. I love you and blessed be and have a good night. Thank you, brother. I want to thank everybody for watching tonight. I hope that you enjoyed the show. Um, like I said before, on the YouTube channel, when this hits YouTube, go down to the comment section and let me know what you think. Also, in the comment section, 
if there's any shows that you would like us to do, any subject matter that you're interested in and would like to know more about, just kind of leave us a comment down there and we'll see it because we check those every once in a while. And we'll try to work up a show for you so that you can get that information you want. Unless we've already done a show about it. If we've already done the show, then I will just kind of link that in the comment section for you. So you can go listen to that show. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you hanging out as always. Um, for those listening on Parax Radio and all of our affiliates, the YouTube channel is youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. That's where everything is. Um, every single episode of Staring Into the Abyss gets put there after it airs. Um, every single episode of Tales from the Abyss that we do, which is like a documentary series paranormal show that we do, where we document the cases that we work, those are all on the YouTube channel as well. There's somewhere between 30 and 50 of those up now. I'm not exactly sure the exact number. Um, and I'm going to be putting up another one here very soon. I've got another one done that I've got to put up. Uh, but I live up in the mountains and my, my internet is poo-poo. And this thing is like almost 3 gigs, so it's going to take a while to upload. So I just got to have a free, a free night where I can do it. But it'll be coming up soon on the channel, so you'll have another episode of Tales. Um, also on the channel is every episode of Paranormal News. That is a little side project that I do where I take articles from the news that have to do with the paranormal. And I present the articles and I kind of give a little bit of commentary on it. Um, every episode of that is there. There's over 200 and some episodes of Staring. There's probably almost 300 episodes of Paranormal News by now. And then there's almost 50 episodes of Tales up there. So there's tons of stuff for you guys to watch if you want to check them out. It's 100% free. Just go there, subscribe, and enjoy. In the description box of every single video is the link to the merchandise store. If you enjoy the show and you want to support us, then that's a great way to do so. Um, we don't really take donations or anything like that. Uh, basically, if you want to support the show, just go buy some merch. I uh, keep the prices pretty low and the quality is good. You got all kinds of different stuff with the staring eye logo on it. You've got all kinds of horror themed uh, products there as well. You've got a uh, tales from the abyss stuff. So if you're into merch and you want to support us, great way to do it in the description box of every single video when it hits YouTube. I want to thank Parax for having us on. We've been on Parax for years now, guys, and we're heard in like 40 some countries. I forget the exact number. I don't keep up with it, but I think the last time I heard it was like 46 countries that listen to staring. So that's a lot of countries to listen to us on the radio and, and different, um, internet affiliates and everything. And then of course you have the YouTube audience that pops in every now and again to check out the show. I just want to let you all know that I appreciate all of you. It's really awesome that so many of you, choose to hang out with us every week, that you find value in what we do. Uh, we do what we do because it fascinates us. We are incredibly interested in the paranormal, and we love this stuff. I've been studying this stuff since I was a little bitty kid. I mean, literally, when other kids were out playing, I was in the library reading about mythologies and monsters and basically anything I could get my hands on that was paranormal. I would read it. And I spent so many months in those libraries with just stacks of books from open to close. I would bring me a lunch and I would literally sit there at the table and I'd eat my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I had a canteen, an old military canteen because I was a military brat. I was on base. And my dad got me this military canteen down to BX. And I would fill that up with water and ice. And I would sit there all day long. And I'd have my lunch and little snacks and my canteen, and I'd just read all day. And I'd come home around dinner time when the library closed. And I did that most summers when I was young. Uh, as I got older, I kind of got into going into the outdoors and, and doing survival stuff and all that kind of stuff too. But I've always researched this stuff. I've always loved it. And that's why a lot of times when you listen to a staring episode, you're going to get better information than you're going to get in most places. And that's because I put in the time, not just on that particular subject, but you're talking about 40 years of research and study that has gone into this show. That's what I've done. 40 years of my life, I've been researching this stuff. So I hope that 
you guys enjoy this journey you're on with us. I hope that you that you continue hanging out, man, because we don't have any plans on stopping anytime soon. We're still having a hell of a lot of fun. Now we're doing this video version of it, which is really cool. Um, so now it's not just going on the radio, but it's also you can see us do the show. And this might end up like on some place like Paraflix or something like that eventually. Uh, we might get picked up doing a video version of staring. Uh, we'll see what happens down the road. But either way, we're having a lot of fun doing this. And I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. So hopefully you guys will continue on the journey. And I just, from me to you, I want to give you a personal thank you for your support and for hanging out with us. It means a hell of a lot. And I appreciate you guys. And I love you. So with that being said, let me know down in the comment section what you guys thought of the show tonight. Let me know if there's any other subjects that you want covered. Uh, make sure that you like the videos, you subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you hit that little bell doohickey up there that notifies you when I put up a new video. Um, recently, I've just been putting up the staring episodes because I've been really busy working on other projects. But I'm going to try to get back into doing some more paranormal news stuff too and get that up on the channel. Like I said, I have another episode of Tales that will be coming up within the next week or two whenever I can get it actually uploaded to the site. I'm hoping to do that very, very soon. Uh, it might be up there right after this. You know, I, I might put this up and then literally the next day you might get the Tales episode. So just kind of keep your eyes open and, and be checking for it. But anyway, thank you guys again for hanging out with us. We love you. And as always, it's up to you to make up your own mind. So let me know what you think. Till we speak to you again. Love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you. And so do we. Bye-bye.